This is going to be a quick video where I show you how I clean up cast iron with uh, electrolysis, an electrolysis process. This is how I do it. Um, this is not a how-to video, only do so at your own risk. But here is a cast iron pan. Uh, as you can see, quite uh, dirty. You know, it's got that just baked on. And I think it's a pretty old pan. I don't know exactly how old it is. Hopefully there'll be a, a maker's mark underneath all that that we'll be able to see. And so uh, I'm going to get the vat prepared so we can uh, use electrolysis to clean this up. The equipment needed for this is really basic, um, the way I'm doing it here. I, of course you're going to need your pan that you're cleaning. I've got a little bit of wire, this is just copper. Um, you're going to need some scrap metal or something to use as your anode. Um, this is stainless steel. Um, it just decays the, the slowest as you're, as you're positive. And then you're going to need a battery charger. You're going to need one that has a, you can see it here, a manual setting. So it'll keep that electricity flowing. And then you're going to need uh, something to use as a tub. Uh, this is just a six gallon uh, trash can. All right, you can buy super cheap. It's sustained inside from uh, doing this to another pan. But uh, once I get this thing set up, I'll show you my setup. All right, here's my little rig all set up. So I've got my uh, two, which are going to be my two positives. It'll be down in the solution. Now right here, the stainless steel coming down. And they're connected with this one wire that goes around here. So those will be hanging down in the water. And then between them, uh, I've got my piece of cast iron, which is going to be the negative. And that's also going to be hanging off a piece of copper wire there. All right, you got to make sure that obviously these two wires don't touch. And then when they're down in the solution, that these two don't touch. When it's down in the solution, it'll be hanging like that. Here is my six gallon uh, waste basket with about five gallons of water in there. You want to add baking soda to this. Uh, about one tablespoon per gallon. And that just makes the water uh, conduct electricity better. Uh, I'm just using a stick to stir this up. Really, this is not rocket science at all. I mean, this is this is so simple, so easy to do, so forgiving of a process. Um, there you go. So now that's all ready to go. That's our uh, solution for electrolysis. Now, obviously, right now it's basically clear. When you start this process, it'll start to bubble, and then very quickly, you know, within an hour or so, uh, the water will turn orange, uh, it'll look really gross. That's normal, don't worry about that. That's just the way to look. You'll see that in just a, just a second here. All right, so here's my setup, all ready to go. Oh, and that's just a piece of scrap lumber I had. Uh, any stick, anything like that that will hold it uh, safely will do fine. In fact, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit more. There we go. Um, all right, let's talk about some safety precautions here. Obviously, this is extremely dangerous. We got bare wires, we've got electricity, we've got water. So here are the safety precautions that I take when I do this. Uh, I do not have my battery charger plugged in. Um, when I plug it in, I'm a long ways away from this setup. I had this setup outside, uh, away from anything. Um, so I have it set up uh, you know, out in the open where there's getting plenty of ventilation, where it's away from anything that could mess with it. And I make sure there's not gonna be anyone around. Um, and then I'm a ways away when I plug the battery charger in and then before I approach it to do anything uh, I unplug the battery charger now once I plug this in though I will come back over here and I will show you uh, what the process looks like when it begins but that's a precaution I normally take as I'm a ways away from this um, whenever there's any electricity actually going to this bucket oh and again I said this before but you got to make sure that your negative does not touch your positive and uh, and make sure they don't touch in the bucket either all right and the cast iron let's see here the cast iron is going to be your negative make sure that's nice and a good connection there and then your, um, your anodes your the whatever scrap metal you have down in the bucket that's always going to be your positive right and that stuff will dissolve slowly during this process um, stainless steel dissolves the slowest uh, decays the slowest so you have to replace it least often but uh, 
any scrap metal will work. Uh, in the past, I've used like baking tins, um, like cookie sheets, stuff like that. All right, so I just went and plugged this in, and you can see the bubbles forming on this. All right, lots of bubbles. You can see the bubbles forming. Maybe if I get over this side, there you go. Less glare on this side. Again, these are live wires, and they're bare. They're not insulated at all, so. I would never normally never approach this, but you can see all the bubbles that are forming uh, down in there. That'll very quickly start to loosen up the gunk that's on your cast iron and clean it up beautifully. It'll get rust off as well, and it won't damage the metal. Right, the, the negative will not be damaged at all, the cast iron in there, and it'll come out just fantastic, and it'll make it so easy to clean. All right, the setup's been running for a couple of hours. You see that foam that's built up on the top there. You see how it's kind of dirty. The water's gotten real dirty. The, the, I've already unplugged the uh, battery charger, so this is now safe. And uh, I'm gonna pull the pin out of there. Again, it's been uh, about two and a half, almost three hours that this has been down in there. So I'll pull it out and dry it off and we'll see uh, how it's coming along so far. Here's the back of that pan, and you can see, here's just a, you can see how it's starting to flake off here. Um, quite a thick layer that was on here, but it's definitely coming along. It still has a ways to go, this is still really caked on there. Uh, but it's definitely coming along, a lot of it's loose. The handle up here is pretty much completely clean now. You can see inside here, starting to loosen up, especially around the edges. Uh, yeah, around the edges it's pretty much just wiping off, but the bottom and the, this lip right here is still really caked on. So I'm going to put it back in there. Uh, this whole process can take several hours. Uh, like I said, this is about two and a half hours, and it's really just gotten started. I'd say we're probably looking at another uh, maybe 12 hours for this pan. We'll see. I'll put it back in there and I'll come check it again in a few hours. I'm going to leave it in longer this time though. This one still has a ways to go. Alright, it's been about another six to eight hours. Well, it's been about six hours. So, uh, it's been in the solution for a total of about eight hours. Maybe maybe closer to nine. And uh, you can see how much of this is just starting to peel off now. I mean, it has come a long, long way from where we started. Pretty much everything that's on the sides here is just peeling off. Let's take a look at the bottom. Here's what the bottom of it looks like right now. Uh, so this is kind of bad news. It says eight inch skillet Taiwan. So it's not uh, not a very good one, but still it's cleaning up real nice. And we'll see uh, see the finished product here. Maybe in just a few more hours, I'm thinking. Maybe another two, three hours or so. I think most of this will be, be off. Well, the weather has turned on us. It's raining, but uh, it's been about another three hours and uh, we should be done with this process. I'm hoping that last little bit that was stuck on there has uh, been cleaned off. As you can see, it's pretty murky water now. Kind of has that kind of an orange rust color to it. I'll pull the pan out and we will have a look and see. It's looking pretty good. Still a little bit on there. It might be loose though. Set it down here. Again, I'm kind of disappointed that this is a Taiwan pan. Um, I probably won't keep it because it's Taiwan. I'll pass it on to somebody else. I might, I might hang on to it though. Who knows? Yeah, it looks like that last little bit will just rub off. All right, well, fantastic. I will uh, do that and then I'll show you the finished product. All right, so here is that cast iron skillet wiped down. Uh, as you can see, I mean, night and day difference from where it started, and that was with about 12 hours uh, with that electrolysis process. So, pretty cool, and I mean, it is easy, it's simple. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Now that that first pan is done, I'm going to move on to this one. This is much larger. Uh, cast iron pan here. I think this one is older as well. I don't really know, of course. We'll find out if we find any markings underneath it. Um, but it kind of looks like it is rather pitted underneath here. 
So uh, we'll see what it looks like once all this gets cleaned off, but it is a thick, thick, thick layer of, you know, just caked on junk on this. So we will drop this one in the solution and see how it goes. I won't detail this one as closely. I'll just show it to you once it's done. All right, here's that other pan. Um, taken as far as I'm gonna take it. I'm not gonna go any further with this one. Uh, kind of an interesting pan. Uh, a new brand for me, as you can see that pitting was there. Um, and it's, you know, it's a big area, but it's not very deep. It's just kind of a surface pitting. Um, I thought looking at the pan before I cleaned it off that it was gonna be deeper, but it's not. Again, this is a new name for me. Uh, WAPIC. Well, puck, I don't know, W-A-P-A-K, the W is kind of hard to see there. Uh, but this was a, a brand I was not familiar with, did a little bit of research on it. It was made in the early 1900s, I think they quit making them, like 1930s or maybe late 1920s. Uh, but this uh, particular um, logo on there, uh, it's called the chicken foot logo because of the, the bottom of the P is split like a chicken's foot. And that dates this pan between 1903 and 1910, which is kind of interesting. It's always fun to uh, look up the history on these items. I'm probably going to sell this one. Uh, I don't really know what I'll get for it. I'm guessing in this condition between $30, $40, somewhere in that range uh, if I sell it online. The inside of the pan is, is in pretty good shape overall. Pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with how it turned out cleaned up pretty well considering where it was when we started. That's going to do it for this video. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and if you have not already, please subscribe to my channel.